The Beginner's Guide is a very thought-provoking, awe-inspiring walking simulator done right. It was crafted by the same man who made The Stanley Parable, which is also a game where the story is driven by the narrator. It's very simplistic in design, containing puzzles, experiments, and lessons to tell a story full of impact. This, by far, is the best walking simulator I've ever played. From the beginning, you're introduced to a couple important elements, the narrator and your surroundings. The narrator, played by Davy himself, is your guide through this adventure, explaining the ups and downs of what this game is and why it exists. The surroundings which you are in serve the purpose of transportation, symbolism, and imagery, all tying nicely together with the story. Both of these elements complement each other, creating a surreal experience. Visually, this game is beautiful. Beautiful in the sense that it is so appealing to the eyes. Sure, the game first starts out pretty stark and bland, but then all of a sudden you're hit with this sheer wonder, realizing that there's a lot more to this game than previously imagined. Every setting is simple, has a purpose, and looks amazing while doing so. They each tell a micro story, and each area either makes you think about something or teaches you a lesson, which I find personal enjoyment in since I'm a thinker. Audibly, it enhances the experience. You know a soundtrack fits when it blends with every other aspect of the game and sinks you deeper, getting you more invested in the journey. The sound effects add a nice flair as well, splashing your ears with atmospheric awareness. The narrator finishes off this audible experience by wrapping the auditory present and then adding a nice bow to this odyssey. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. At one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. From a storytelling standpoint, I'm honestly impressed. It's limited in actual gameplay, yet tugs on the heartstrings. It's mostly just listening to the narrator talk, but this specific narrator talks to you as if you're a friend, not just a player. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. It's mostly you walking in these specific areas, but every area has a meaning. Everything has a meaning. In every setting, you're experiencing new thought-provoking mind experiments and puzzles that relate to the story. These puzzles start out simple, such as walking backwards or opening a door with a switch. As time progresses, these mind experiments become more convoluted and abstract, yet aren't void of purpose. In some situations, you're just a spectator, but in others, you're in direct control of the outcome. Turn Stop this video right now and play this game. I'm serious. Once you get past this point, you will never look at this game the same way again. So please, go enjoy this experience for yourself before you continue. Trust me, you won't regret it. This is more than a walking simulator. It's a look at one man's brain through the telescope of creativity. It exposes his personal fears, doubts, and state of mind. And this mind is hurt. The man behind this creativity is Davy's friend, Coda. Coda is introduced right at the beginning and is the one responsible for all of these games, even though you never see or hear him. Because of him, however, I was able to experience this astounding game that truly impacted me. Every single area of this game reflects how the game maker feels and gives a different perspective on life through the eyes of a creator who struggles mentally. One common thread is the theme of loneliness and isolation. Throughout this game, Coda hints at this with houses in the middle of nowhere, dark areas, a lone person on a stage, plus other little hints. He even goes so far as to make games where all he does is have conversations with another version of himself or just a mannequin with a square head. It's really amazing that this game can convey a feeling such as loneliness without being too complex to comprehend by being a walking simulator. As the game progresses, the invisible ink that conceals the true roles of the narrator and Coda start to fade away with time. At first, the narrator seems like this guy who is just reminiscing the creative work of his friend, telling us that some of these games have been an inspiration for his own games. Coda seems like a guy who just creates for himself without sharing his work publicly to the world. Once this ink is erased, Davy is the one who keeps pushing Coda to make more games so he can get to know Coda better and keeps wanting to show Coda's games to the world. Coda reaches the breaking point where he's literally torturing himself with his own games by emotional and mental abuse and forces Davy out of his life because Coda realizes that Davy truly doesn't care about Coda. Davy only cares about the games that he relates to. I couldn't stop playing this game. And the reason I couldn't stop playing is because... I relate to this game. Along with loneliness and isolation, this game conveys topics of perfection, social anxiety, depression, failure, emptiness, overthinking, and validation. All things 
that I deal with. I cried. I straight up cried. I cried because I was able to see my personal flaws in a creative work that wasn't my own. Once I got to the point near the end where Davey literally confesses his sins, I just lost it. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to doubt. I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I related to Coda with his feelings of deep isolation. I related to Davy and his need for validation. I feel like Coda and the narrator. This game impacted me so much that I ended up emailing Davy with the email that was provided at the very beginning of the game, explaining how much of a masterpiece I thought the game was. I haven't heard back yet, but that's okay. Out of every single game I've ever played, none can compare to this specific gem. It made me feel emotions, and when you're a person who doesn't feel emotions a lot, it's quite a refreshing experience. It's something new. It's an astounding story told in an unconventional way with a simplistic environment. Thank you, Davey. Thank you so much.